Okay, so we want to apply a texture to our plate. In order to do so, we've got a UV map this plate, okay? So you can see I've got a texture applied to my plate at the moment, and there's a checkerboard texture. It's, it's unitized because it's the same in the width as it is in the height, and that's the same all the way around, okay? So I've actually got my UV map by here. Let's just bring it across to this screen. Um, let's, yeah, there we go. So I've actually got my UV map, one second, there you go. I've got my UV map by here. So I've got these, I've broken the plate up into one piece, two piece and the rim, okay? And you can see that in this view, you can see that little seam, white seam going across there. So yeah, this is what I've got going on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set it all back to normal and I'm gonna show you how I got to this because then I can export this to Photoshop and start painting in my textures. So I'm gonna set it back and this is the goal for the first half of the tutorial. Okay, so this is the point that I left you guys at last time. We applied a glass material to the wine glass and chrome materials to these. Now with the plate, I actually want to draw a pattern on it. So I've got to take it into Photoshop. However, I need to unwrap it first. And um, make sure you check out my previous lesson where I explain what UV unwrapping is. Again, think of it, if you've got a sphere and you want to texture it, um, think of an orange. You peel the outside off of an orange. So what we've actually got to do is we've got to actually convert this 3D model to 2D faces so that we can paint on 2D texture maps, okay? So this is a 3D object. We've got to convert it to a bunch of 2D faces, right? Um, so what we need to do, first of all, is We've got this selected, and if you remember when we modelled it earlier, if you hit one when it's selected, it's a hard, sort of, um, very, very, sort of, low poly version. If we hit three, this is our smooth mesh, but it's only a preview. So first of all, we've got to convert it to a high, den more dense mesh. So with it selected, all you need to do, come to modify, convert, and where it says smooth mesh to polygons, just click that. And now this is what we've got. It's actually converted it so, you know, that that's our actual final mesh. So that's important. Next, what you want to do is you want to go to UV and UV Editor. Okay, and you'll have something that looks like this. Okay, um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make sure I've got, I don't want this panel floating. I want it next, I want it split in half. So I'm going to go to panels. You don't have to do this, but I am. I'm going to go to panels, layouts, and two panes side by side. I've got one pane here and one there. So I'm going to go into this one. I want to keep this view, but I'm going to go into this view and go panels and panel UV editor. So I've got my UV editor by here and this in here. Now, you have yours floating, do whatever you want. Now, what you'll notice is the end game is also, as if you click on a different um, piece of geometry, you'll notice that this texture board may get applied to it. The reason being, just you can enable it and disable it um, by here. You want to make sure that you've got it enabled because as we view this texture, you can see that this geometry is split up into different pieces in here. So. If I right click and go UV shell and just click this one, you'll see, and we can move it around, that this is one piece. This is weirdly, this is another piece. That's a bit weird, isn't it? And that's, that's why it's not working. And then this is gonna be the bottom, okay? So what we wanna do is I want, I, I wanna redo this because this bit by here, you can see, the squares are different sizes on the outer part, but there, it's not very nice. Uh, what we can do to make this easier is if we go to object mode, just click the object, and up here, see this little icon? Isolate, select. What that's gonna do is gonna hide everything else. So it's just, we can come around it more, it's just nicer, okay? So yeah, the end game is to get a checkerboard on there and to get it unwrapped properly so we can actually, let's say we wanted to draw over this bit by here, it, it's it's in its own shell. So when, again, when I highlight this, this is its own part and it, it, oh, it's just mental, it's not nice. So in order to start, well, this is gonna be an easy one, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to object mode, I'm gonna click the object, I'm gonna come to UV, and I'm going to do a camera-based UV, but not yet. I wanna come from above, okay? From above like this, look at it directly above. I'm gonna go to UV, camera based and click that. What you'll notice 
is from where we're looking at it from above, it's just going to almost like project, like a projector, project this um, checkerboard onto it. So now as we come around, that's actually looking quite nice. But look on the side by here, but there, it's all distorted because this is actually one whole shell, okay? So it's getting projected down from where we were up here. And for, the, for that part, that's looking banging, that's awesome. But on the side, look at that distortion. It's all ugh, not very nice. So what we want to do is we want to split this off because again, if we right click shell, it's all one piece. So essentially, we, <laughs> it's just one 3D model now, it's mad. So what we want to do is I'm going to split this off. So if you come to edge mode, I'm going to double click on just on the edge by here, double click that, and what it's done is it's highlighted the edge all the way around. It's all orange all the way around, okay? What I'm going to do is come to cut slash sew, and I'm going to go cut, and it's going to put a seam in there. So if I right click in here now and go to UV shell, and click this, I can now move this. So what it's done is it's split it up into two shells. This one is actually working perfectly because that, that's now a 2D representation of the inner part of the plate. This is now a 2D representation of the bottom and the side. We don't want the side included on there. Okay, so we need to make another cut. So what I'm going to do, go back to edge mode, just select, double click by here, and it's going to select that edge all the way round, and I'm going to go cut, and cut. Now if we right click and go to UV shell, we've got, um, let's move that, we've got that as an extra bit, this is an extra bit, and look, the bottom, there we go, the, the squares are all matching perfectly, and the top is fine, and it's just this outside now. Now this outside, I'll be completely honest with you, I'm not going to keep it like that, because look, it's all Look at there, it's all sort of skewed and not really nice, okay? So yeah, that, that's just a little bit, oh, that's, that's horrible. So what we want to do is, I actually want to do, well, let's think about it. What shape is this? This rim around the outside, what kind of shape is it? Let's go to UV. Is it um, a plane, like a pl like you know, flat surface? No. Is it a sphere? No. Is it a cylinder? Well, actually, yes, it is. That rim is technically a cylinder. So I'm going to, first of all, go to face mode. I'm going to select all of these faces. Okay, so just click off and yeah, right click, face, select all of these faces, and it'll actually select them and turn them orange in here as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to UV, cylindrical, because we want these all in a strip. And we could, what we could do is we could try and cut one of them and then like move each individual vertice out. That's mad. We're not going to do that. Um, so yeah, I've selected all the faces. Go to UV, cylindrical. And what you'll notice is, first of all, look, it's, it's got them all in a line. It, it's basically done it. You've got this little gizmo in here, this little thing. What we want to do is basically click and drag this and wrap it all the way around. See, what it's doing is it's just projecting now from the side. So just click and drag and it's all the way around. Okay, we've got this now in a strip. So let's zoom in and you know what? It's not actually working yet. And the reason why is look at these. These squares here are uniform because they're the same in the width as they are in the height. Here, they're proper stretched. So with this still selected, and even if you've unselected it, that's fine. Right click, go to UV shell. And it is hard to see because they're quite small, but you can see the squares are stretched right across. So let's get our scale with the R key. And let's just start. I know that this, this would be a long, narrow strip like this. And you can see the checkerboard changing in there. So let's just go something like this. Let's make it wider. And you can see now these squares, as we make it wider, are starting to come back. And they're starting to get uniform. So just something like that, they're nearly uniform, not quite. Still got the air, now they're getting a bit more uniform. Okay, so they're square, they're now uniform squares, and look, look how wide that is. But imagine we've just peeled that rim off, and that's exactly what's happening, okay? And what we can do is now, those squares are quite small, we wanna really try and match them to this size, so we can try and scale this uniformly now, down like that, and it makes these squares a little bit bigger. It's, it gets hard to see by the time you get down here. Um, but yeah, we've now split this up into 
three pieces. So this plate is represented in a 2D manner. Okay, so now that we've got that set up, we've got these in three different pieces, I wanna think about this, right. I can see this square by here. This is where we need to lay these out, okay? So basically the squares on the side here, because this is a different size, the squares are smaller on here than they are here. But what we wanna think about is this square by here, when we export a 2K image, 2048 pixels by 2048, what we wanna think about, right guys, is which one of these shells needs the most resolution. And I know I'm only painting a texture on the top of the plate. The bottom of the plate we're not even going to see and it's just going to be a solid white colour. The rim, I'm probably going to give a solid blue colour. So the rim and the bottom don't need that many pixels, it's just solid colour, right? And the actual, this one I'm actually going to paint detail onto. So what that means is this rim, we can scale this down to fit in here, right? in this one square, and it doesn't matter if it hasn't got that many pixels because we're not putting detail into it, so we don't need to worry. The bottom then, again, we don't really need to worry. It's gonna be on the table, we're not seeing it, so to be honest, you know what, I can scale this down, it's just gonna be a solid color. I don't need to worry. What it means is I can give more, because it's gotta fit in this square, I can give more pixels and more resolution to this. Hell, I could even go smaller by here, because again, it's just a solid color. Um, I don't really need to worry. And this one, again, let's scale this up and just give it more detail. There we go. Make sure it doesn't go over the lines. And for this instance, some you'll see that the squares here are different size than they are on the bottom, okay? And they are on the side. That's okay in this instance, because this is the only bit that gets texture detail. If I wanted some sort of texture map whether it's a sort of scratches map or roughness map or anything on the bottom, then I need to make sure that the squares are the same size throughout. So I'd need to rescale this, you know, to make sure it's the same size, scale them both down together. Y you know what I mean? So, uh, but in this instance, for what I'm doing in this series, I don't need to worry about it. This is going to be fine. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to save this out as a 2D image, now that it's laid out, so I can take it into Photoshop and paint what I want to paint on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Image and UV Snapshot. This is default into the dinner scene file in the images, and um, I'm going to call it, um, there we go, I'm going to call it plate underscore UV, okay? I'm going to go for the image format of a PNG, 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels, 2K resolution, basically pretty standard. And yeah, all that's fine. Just make sure you know where you're saving it to. And if you set your project like we did at the beginning of the, of the series, then you should be fine. Um, so all I'm gonna do is click apply and close. And if I now navigate to my folder, you should see I've got this plate UV. If I double click, you'll see I've got this, okay? So that is a 2D representation. So what we're gonna do now is jump back into Photoshop, or back into Photoshop, we're gonna jump into Photoshop and actually open this image. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've opened up my PNG in Photoshop and you probably can't see a lot. So what I've done is I've made a new layer below, filled it with black, and this is what we've got. So the actual P UV PNG image was this, um, basically this, what should we call it, this wireframe. So I just wanna kind of show you how this works, all right guys. I'm gonna make a new layer above and I'm gonna get my brush very quickly, a very simple one first. Let's get um, pink, let's go. Oh, that's a bit, <laughs> bit large. Let's go um, high, okay? So I'm just gonna show you what this is doing. I'm gonna turn off my, you, my actual wireframe, and yeah, I'm gonna keep it black with this on there, okay? So what we'll be expecting is this, the H and the I to appear on that part. Basically, let's have a look. Basically, it would appear on, Ooh, let's close that down <laughs> on that part of the plate by there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, again, disable the wireframe. I'm gonna go File, Save As, and I'm gonna save out into my um, Source Images folder. I'm gonna go Plate Texture Test. And I'm gonna go for a, let's go for a PNG, nice and fast. Click Save and it's giving me the options. I'm just gonna go largest file size, fastest saving, get it done. Um, I'm gonna minimize now, and what I'm gonna do is, with this plate selected, right click, 
I'm going to ooh, right click. I'm going to go assign new material. I'm going to go to Arnold AI standard surface. I'm actually going to um, click off this now and click out of my UV editor. So what I'm going to do is just go back to perspective and there we go. So yeah, that's what we've got. We've got perspective view and also let's just go change this to orthographic top view. Okay, so that's that's what that's what we've got. Um, remember, actually, we've still got before we apply the texture, we've still got this isolated. So unisolate it now if you want. Um, it's just this little icon by here. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to keep it isolated in this view. So, like I said, assign new material, and we went. I think I already gave it a um, AI standard surface. So just go material attributes just to view it. Okay. Um, or just assign a new one again. But basically, in the color by here, click the checkerboard and you'll want to go to the file tab and come to the image name and find that that image so i think mine was called plate texture test let's click open and you may not see anything happen in this view if you don't that's fine just click this little textured ball up here and what you'll see now is this little thing that's appearing there so if we turn our uv on by here that's why that's happening you can see how it kind of correlates there we go okay but remember if you want to see your textures in the live view just click that little texture ball up there and you can click it by here as well but yeah that's what's happening okay so what i want to do is come back into photoshop i've given you an image it's called um this is called floral texture so william morris texture i think so what i'm going to do is i'm very quickly i'm almost going to i want you to do what whatever you want right i'm going to time lapse myself now just pulling something together for this plate, okay? So I'm gonna time lapse myself doing that. Okay, so this is what I've got, right? Um, if I turn the UV off, this is what my texture looks like. I've just taken this texture and I'll make the link available to you where you can download this floral texture. I've just mas masked it basically to this area. I've drawn two little circles on there. And for the rim, what I've done is I've just taken a dark blue from this image in here. I've taken a dark blue and painted it across. What you wanna do is make sure I put my UVs on top just so I could see everything was lining up. Um, Everything else, I think, I want it to be white, so I forgot, nearly forgot to do that. That's terrible, isn't it? Um, so I'll just get a new layer, put it below everything, yeah, and I'm just gonna go for a white, get my paint bucket, there we go. Um, so what we wanna do is make sure the UV's turned off. So the bottom, this is the shell for the bottom, that's gonna be completely white. The rim is gonna be completely blue. In fact, I'm just going to like um, go to wherever that rim is that rim color, and I'm just gonna get the eraser really, really small. I don't normally use the eraser, but I'm just gonna make sure it's not having any, yeah, it's not spreading over there. Cool, so that's what the plate's gonna look like. So turn your UV off, go to file, save as, you do whatever you want. Um, I'll make this available as well, this little texture thing. I'll, I'll upload this JPEG for you just in case. Um, plate UV, I'm gonna go, right, dinner scene images, there we go. Um, plate underscore texture. Um, let's go PNG and plate underscore texture, save and save. Now what I want to do, pop back into Maya, right click material attributes, go into the color. You'll see now it's not a checkerboard, it's this arrow. So click there and we'll click now this folder and where is it? Plate texture test. Ah, I think I saved it to the wrong folder in here. So file, save as, I saved it into uh, I need to save it into source images. So plate underscore texture and PNG. There we go. Plate underscore texture, save. Okay. And now it should be plate texture in here. Let's just come back out and refresh. Source images, plate texture. There we go. Click open. And now this is our nice little texture. So we got that rim around the outside. We've got that texture there. To be honest, I'd probably go back and change this if it were me to make this um, go a little bit closer towards the edge, okay? But anyway, that's our little texture. So what I'm gonna do is click this. 
I'm gonna unisolate it. I'm gonna come back out. And we were rendering in the last so in the last one. So with this surface, I want to go into or right-click material attributes. I want to actually see is it reflective enough? How does it look in my render? So let's open up my render view by just clicking that eyeball up there and make sure render. We're rendering the perspective view. So yeah, that's fine because we're in perspective. Let's just give it a click and see what we get now. Because we want that plate to almost be quite ceramic. And actually the standard settings, to be honest, they're working, it's quite reflective. Now, to be honest, the only thing I want to change here is looking at the specular. We've, we've got, this is where the color's coming from. Um, looking at the specular, the roughness, if we, tell you what, if we zoom in, just so we can get a closer look, let's zoom in and do a re-render, because it looks a little bit rough, and it may be the kind of quality of the render settings, I'll have a look at them later. These sort of ref reflections, they are still a little bit too rough, so if we take the roughness of the specular down to, let's say, 0 0.05, um, let's yeah, make sure, zero 05, hit enter. Let's keep the last image so we can compare and click render again. Let's see now how this one comes through. It's already, yeah, look, look at those reflections there. That's banging. So before and after, that's exactly what I wanted. That plate is looking lush. Okay, let's do another last minute render, see where we are so far before we move on to doing the table. Let's do a little render view from here and let's see where we are. We won't have much left then, we're just going to UV and texture the table, go through a little bit of, um, oh look at that, that is looking beautiful. Um, cool, right yeah, in the next lesson we're going to look at UV in the table, that one's probably going to be even, even easier hopefully, um, but yeah, I'll see you in the next video.